Okay, this is the project we're doing on this video today. Um, this is done mostly with the uh, DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylic Paints. Um, these paints are so vibrant. That's what I love about this project. It's so vibrant. It's got a little bit of a glare because I've already varnished this piece. And we used a little bit of just our regular um, Americana uh, paints, acrylic paints, as undercoating for this in the background. So. Um, you are going to just have so much fun with this project and you're going to love how vibrant the colors are when you're done. So let's get started. Okay, I've got my background painted just black. Um, and we're going to undercoat all of our elements here with um, buttermilk and then we're going to come and add glazes on top of these and start you know adding the color in here so just uh, take your time and base in each element as you see it this is a uh, canvas panel that I'm working on. I believe it's a 9 by 12 here. So I'm using a little bit um, older brush because canvas can be a little bit tough on your brushes. So I'm going to go off camera and finish this. And even the stems we're going to base in with this color. We're going to add washes and glazes of color on top of this to pull out the color but we want to have this undercoating since we have the black background on here. So I'm going to go off camera and do that and we're going to come back and get going. Um, as I'm painting this, there is a, a side note here that I would like to give you a tip on. As you are painting, um, keep moisture in your paint. So add a little bit of water to it and you don't want it runny, watery but um, you want it a little bit thinner than what it is when it comes out of the bottle. So you'll have some nice smooth undercoating so as we start adding our glazes and stuff on here we won't have any lumps and bumps and ridges on here that will distract from uh, what we're painting. So uh, I just wanted to come back and quickly give you that little side tip. Okay, well all of our undercoat is on here, so now we're going to start adding some color on here. Okay, let me get you in here just a little bit. And I'm just going to take a, a small little brush. I've got a filbert brush here. And I'm going to be using some media paint. Now all the other paints that I use are DecoArt acrylic paint in the bottle very affordable and this is one of their fluid acrylics um, we'll be using this on the project quite a bit these fluid acrylics so I'm just gonna thin some of this down with some water and just I just want to get a sheer color of this I like to put my color on in a little bit of layers so that um, I don't get darker than what I want. I think I'll put a little bit of put some magenta out here. This is also a media paint. You take, and it really takes a tiny, teeny tiny little bit of this paint. That makes it a little bit too red. Too brown, I guess. Scoot it over here where I get just a, a tiny scooch of that red in there. And we'll add it to our stem. We can pull a little bit of this up into our flower, but not too much. I'm going to get my, <coughs> my buttermilk out. And we'll take a little bit of that and we'll kind of blend it down in here with this green, just down at the base of the flower here. 
got a little bit of a glare, so I can't really see what's going on here. bigger brush <clears throat> and I think I'll put out some uh, primary magenta along with that um, quinacridone magenta and we're going to start adding some color on our petals here I want this to be very sheer so I'm going to have just a small amount on my brush and just start putting this in here. I'm going to work one petal at a time so we're going to bring that down into that green a little bit. And leave some of the background showing through here. It's going to be <clears throat> a little bit darker up here. This is just washes that we're putting on here. I'm going to dampen it so that I can work those washes a little bit faster so they don't start drying. So it might get a little bit bigger brush. A little bit bigger filter here. Go back here on this one. Now these are just washes that we're starting out with. We'll, we'll get darker as we go here. We're just kind of laying in where we want some color to be. Kind of sorting out our petals a little bit. This is the inside of this one here, and then the outside of it. And this is kind of the inside of this here. This one, this little area right back here is a little bit darker. <clears throat> and then we've got this one. Now you can pre-dampen your petals, you know, if you want. And if you don't have the media paints, then you can just use acrylic paints. Nice magenta color. And the outside of this one. Now this right here <clears throat> is a flower that is behind this flower. So we want that to be extremely light. So we want very little paint. We want mostly water. We're just tinting the water there. And we want to keep it light. We'll come back and add more to it, but we want to start out really light. And then the green back here, it's a little bit darker. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt umber out, I think. It's just the bottle acrylic. I'm going to take a teeny tiny little bit of that. 
mix in with our green here. Maybe just a touch more. Kind of make this a little bit darker because this is way back. Well, not way back, but it's behind. It's in the shadows back in here. So it's going to be a little bit darker. <clears throat> Oops. And we'll go back over here. And we'll do the same with this flower. water on my brush and kind of smooth this out without removing the, the paint. Now I really recommend that you keep your this paint a little bit lighter. We're going to come back and darken but if you get it too too dark to begin with then you got nowhere to go. So we're just kind of glazing over our individual petals here. I'll just get all of them glazed right now and then we'll come back and we'll just work one petal at a time so we can work on it while it's wet. media paint goes a long ways. It's very, very pigmented. So it does does not take very much of it. We're going over all of our white. lay in some uh, lighter color in here. I think down the center here. I'm just going to stay up on the very chisel edge of the brush and kind of pull some down here down to the base. I'm going to pull some this direction. And some out this direction as well. Alright, and then we're going to start adding some more of the, um, the pink in here, which is that primary magenta. So I'm thinning it down. following. Down into that lighter color. We'll have to come back and brighten that lighter color. And on this side as well. Touch my paper towel after I load my brush because it may feel like there is a lot of water I don't want, I don't really want that to line in the middle to be so stark. Let me go back into some of this light buttermilk. I have to go with a lighter color here. Maybe a white. Maybe mix some white in there. Ooh, baby. 
Maybe not quite that much. It's a little bit more than I wanted. You know, when you begin a painting, you, you, you're painting along and you're looking at it and you're like, Oh, good Lord, what have I done? That is not going to look like anything. But it will. It will. I'm going to put, I think, some avocado, light avocado out. It's just a regular acrylic paint. It's not uh, a media paint of any kind. I just want a little bit that on my brush. Put some of it down here. Just kind of work it in. Okay, let's keep going with our pinks. Let's get a little bit brighter. So we'll add a little bit less water in it this time. This really needs to be light up here, so I'm going to add that lightness back in there. Just a touch more water here. So I can move the paint a little bit better. Alright, let's go with some of our lighter color up here. Want it to be quite that wide. So I'm going to come in and take that down just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit of lightness over here. And then more darker color. So we'll, we'll be working each petal sort of like this. Just with some thin layers of paint. look a little bit more like a petal now. I took my lightness there away, so I'll have to put some of that back in. Put this side. Is this just that um, media paint? We're just pulling it in, just building some layers here. One of my favorite ways to paint is to paint with washes and glazes and build some layers on there. So that petal's starting to really look like more like a petal. Some 
darker colors. This down here will stay fairly light, so we probably won't put a whole lot more color down there on that area. But we can come in with some of that, just a tiny little bit of that darker color that we put on there, which was quinacrid quinacridone magenta. And we can pull a little bit of this in here. This is such a pretty color. The canvas panel really wants to pull on your brush and drag it and, and that's pretty good for this project. We want it to have that little bit of a little bit of more lightness down here. So I'm just gonna pull some up. There we go, that petal's looking much better now. We'll darken up the stem here in a little bit. So I think I'm going to move to this petal back here next and work on it. Okay, so I need a little bit of lightning here. And again, that's almost way too light. Oops. Maybe not that much. Tiny bit of pink in there. And then we want to bring this down. I have to do some work on that pedal, but for right now we'll just leave it right there. I had to come in and adjust the shape of this here. So let's go to this back pedal here. We got some um, uh, coming down from here. We got like some white or the lighter color, I guess I should say. And then we'll go into the primary magenta. To start adding this in here. Just go thin at first. We're going to put a little fold on that one back there. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, this is a little bit different than I've done some of my other projects, but This is a fun way to try something new. Alright, let's get a little bit darker back in there. I'm going to pick up a little bit of quinacridone magenta. Now I've just picked it up on the side of my brush along with some of that primary magenta. to this one. And we're going to make a, a fold in this leaf. So I'm going to put some dark stuff back there a little bit. And then we'll have a little bit of this going on down here. Kind of smooth it out. a little bit of more of that together. Come over here. Maybe 
just a touch more paint here. Let's bring some of the lighter color back in there. So this edge right here will be a little bit lighter. And then of course this little folded edge we did right here. We'll put a little bit of that lightness on there. And then we'll streak some up through here. That's still pretty wet, so that's probably not going to show up so well. Up through here. Let's shape follow that. A little bit through here. That's still very wet there. some of the darker down here. It's darker through here. If we get it on our black, no, no big deal. We can take that out. down through here. I'm going to darken this. And I might add a tiny bit of green in there. Just to kind of give that center a little bit, a little bit of more darkness in there. And that's almost too bright, so I'm going to come back in a little bit and add a, a darker color on there. I'm going to touch the tips of this one. Too much water in my brush here. I'm still using this filbert brush here. I haven't changed it out or anything. I'm just letting the brush kind of drag. back and add some white highlights on here in a little bit. Okay, I think I'm going to go work on this petal next. We've still got more to do here. We're just still laying in a foundation. Alright, let's work on this petal now. And I need to lighten up down here. So we're going to pull some of our light buttermilk, which is what we originally base coated these in with. So we've got a pretty fairly light center down there. So I'll wash that out of my brush and go into our primary magenta. 
Put it down a little bit. And I'm going to come around this petal here. Make it a little bit darker. We'll darken up with some darker colors here later. And I'm just going to kind of pull that up and out. And then over here on this side, this will be a little bit darker. I'm going to kind of pull it down into that white so I'm not covering all the white and I'm up on the chisel edge of the brush. So the chisel edge is when you're just on the tip of the brush and the brush is going this way as opposed to this way. This is the flat edge of the brush. So now we're on the chisel edge. that a little bit lighter up there. Okay, let's take a little bit of that buttermilk and we'll pull a little bit down from here into that section there. To our primary magenta, and then we'll pull some of this down. There we go, that looks pretty good. This is just uh, a very easy way to lay in our colors, and then we can come back and do our floating and you know, do our shading and highlighting and stuff, but this kind of gets the base of our color down in there and gets where we want to go started. I think it makes it much easier when you can lay in some washes of color as opposed to base coating a really dark color on here. So I'm going to take our um, two magenta colors and mix them. And we're going to go to this petal back here. This is going to be kind of dark down in here. That's the inside of that petal. And then we're kind of dark out here. This is actually, I think, two petals. I've kind of made them into one. And then this here will be darker at the bottom, so I'm going to start at the bottom of this one. It's going to have a little bit of lightness out here on the edge, but we'll come back and add that. And this is just that mix of the two. And we'll just pull it up. It's going to be lighter at the top, so I'm just tickling this brush. Let me zoom in a little bit so maybe you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm just tickling the brush. That's a little darker than I want, so I'm going to kind of wipe that back. This is a light edge here. So I'm going to go into some of my white or buttermilk, which is our, our first like highlight color. And we'll add some of this on the outer edge here. That's pretty wet, so might not show up too much yet. Just a little bit out there. And we can put a little bit of this in here. We still gotta make that pink, not white, but um, we're gonna start. Okay, and we're just gonna continue this on around with all of our petals. Now this is the inside of a petal here. Primary magenta, a little bit of water, and we're going to kind of darken this in in here. On that petal. Don't be afraid to use your fingers. Do some finger painting. That's dark back in there. This will be a little bit darker on this edge out here. It'll be lighter, more towards the front here. And then this one out here will have some light, a little bit of light coming up from the bottom. So the center of this will be a little darker. 
I knew if I zoomed you in, I'd probably get you off camera shot. So I have to take that back out. So a little bit of lightness here. Not too much. And a little bit on this edge here. Okay, now this, this petal is the one that goes to the uh, one that is behind. So let's add a little bit more glazing of our primary magenta. You can put just a tiny touch of that quinacridone magenta, but we're still going to keep this very washy. Um, most of our color is going to be up here. We can get just a little bit darker out here on this edge. But this is still very light because it's it's uh, back behind, which is kind of hard for you to see when it's um, wet and shiny like that. So we're going to take our light color here and pull some up into that. Kind of blend it in. And we'll pick up a little bit of that green that um, green gold media green gold put it out mine dried because I'm just putting tiny little drops of this out because it takes such a small amount because it's so pigmented so we're going to bring some of this up in here and a little bit of pink mixed in with that I think off camera already. So I'm going to go into a little bit of that burnt umber and kind of darken this up down here. And get my light color back out, which is that buttermilk. And put some of that back in here. Kind of pull that down in. And then our pink again. Wipe the excess paint off my brush, water. And then I am just feather tickling here. I mean, probably only a couple of hairs at a time is, is grazing across that right there. So we'll definitely have to make the edge of this one a little bit darker. So we can tell that that one is for sure on top. So I just laid in a little bit there. And now I'm just going to kind of pull it out. Same here. This will need to be a little bit darker here. And we'll work some of that as we float in our shadows and stuff to get it to uh, pop out a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of um, the burnt umber with my green. I mean, just a tiny, tiny little bit of burnt umber. And I'm going to darken this one up back here. Just to make it a little bit darker. Almost all will be green. And then I'll go into some of the white. that in there. That's still a little brighter than what I want it to be. I want it to be more muted so I'm going to let that dry and uh, I want to brighten the edge of this one here with a little bit of the buttermilk. Here. Oops, I can't remember that. 
right here move my camera since I've rearranged my room and so now I keep uh, trying to figure out where my camera is for the shot okay um, these two are good for now until we come back and add more detail of shading and highlighting on here okay we're gonna work on this one back here now um, I'm gonna take my primary magenta and I think I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of alizarin crimson to the mix of it just to give that a little bit different color I didn't want to add the um, the quinacridone magenta because it was a little bit too pink and I needed to go just a touch darker here I don't know if this is going to work but we're going to give it a shot so we're going to go around this We're, we're doing washes and glazes, so you'll work this paint while it's wet. And I just got on that one, so we'll have to come back and put a bit more water in my brush here. When you go pick up water, just touch your paper towel and go to your surface and, and uh, smooth some of that paint out because you don't know um, how uh, much paint you'll have in there how much water and you don't want to come in and add too much. Let's put a little bit of lightness down here. Just kind of tickling that up in there. I have a little bit of lightness on this side here. streak some red in it but we'll have some a little bit of lightness on this edge okay go back into our dark color here I'm gonna get a little bit more of that alizarin crimson in the mix here down into our lighter color a little bit. I really like these media paints. I mean, because they are so pigmented, when you add water to them, even though it thins it out, it doesn't take that bright color away which I really really love okay so let's work one petal at a time here let's go to the ones in the back first so this one has a, a turned ooh, brush was separated didn't have enough water this one has a turned leaf here okay this one's going to be pretty dark. We'll come back and darken it, but we're just kind of setting its foundation right now. We are just building our layers. some lightness on it so I won't fill it in completely. Get a little bit more water in my brush here. And then this one. I'm going to add a little bit of cranberry wine to this one because I want it to be darker. It's going to be a little bit lighter on that edge so I'm going to there. And we can put a little bit 
bit of this color out here on this outside edge. I'm going to bring some of that lighter color up through here a little bit more. some of that darker. Get a little bit of water on my brush. Down into that. You probably would just love to be on camera shot, wouldn't you? I usually have my easel here. <laughs> that I can put it on. That controls where I have it at a little bit better, but I have packed that because I'm getting ready to go teach a seminar. And yeah, I should get one for traveling and one for keeping here. I just want a little bit of lightness out on the edge here. We'll come back and add more lightness with our highlight when we highlight. So that's getting us a little start on that one. Might go just a touch darker back here. We're going to come down and get some basing in on this one. And this is one I added. It wasn't in the grouping that I had, but I wanted another tulip over here. So we are just going to create this. The way that we see it. my brush out and pick up some of that buttermilk and pull some of that. That other paint's a little wet so It won't streak too much up in there until that dries. So we'll have our main vein coming up through here, I think. Primary magenta. Just a little bit. Okay, let's work our other petals here. So, this is going to be darker in here. Get a tiny little bit of cranberry wine with that. See if that will help. Cranberry wine is, is not too awful. Hmm. Opaque. It can be a little more transparent. So, I'm just going to pull some of this onto those petals. 
This will be on the back edge because that's again another turned petal there. That's kind of turned on that one, so we'll just pull some of this down. so I can def define these petals a little bit more. There's three of them right there. This is the inside here, like it's cupped out all the way across here. So we'll get a little bit of our buttermilk. We'll streak some of this up in here. Ooh, or we'll streak a lot. <laughs> water in my in my um, brush here okay that's a that's a good enough start for us to uh, start adding some shading and highlighting with I'm just gonna put a little bit of darkness here so I can Find that edge a little bit. And maybe here, I can't really tell where my So that is just kind of our, our base coats. So now we can go in and start adding the really fun stuff. All right, let's start adding some deeper areas in here. Zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> we are going to mix. Now I just want you to brush mix, and it's okay if it's not exactly the same every time you mix it. This is nature. Nothing is ever perfect or exactly the same, so we don't need to be. So we're going to take our alizarin crimson and some burnt umber. And I'm using burnt umber instead of uh, lamp black because uh, it's going to give our color um, not quite, it's gonna, not going to make it quite as dark. And so I don't want it to be super dark. I just want us to get some subtle variances in here. So we're going to go around our petals. This is the inside of this tulip here, so we kind of want to darken it. So we're just going to brush mix. And then this petal has some like little wavy stuff, so we can kind of help define that a little bit. Kind of walk that up here. We don't want tons of darkness here, so just some subtle variances. And let's see. We do want a little bit darker down the seam here. And we're going to come in and brighten that up with some white. So I'm probably leaning more towards the cranberry or the alizarin and crimson side, you know, and not. Um, trying to let too much of the burnt umber take over. And I'm on a canvas panel here, so it's going to really um, suck the paint right in there. Okay, so we'll just keep going around this big one here. Oh, let's come on the side and this petal here. And that's just a little piece of a, uh, the edge of that petal back there, so we'll just keep it kind of dark. And then we've got some darkness here. A 
little bit under this edge because we got kind of a, a little bit of a turned edge there. And the same over here. This is not, well, it's not really turned, it's, but it's got that bright edge at the top of it, so we want to keep it a little bit brighter. And I'm going to put a little bit out here on this outer edge. this edge here in a minute, but I don't want to uh, overlap my my floats because then I'll just remove the one that I just put on. Okay, so that's kind of given us some more definition here. It'll be a little defined down here, but I don't want, you know, a lot of harshness there. I want it to stay a little bit more on the softer division there. I'm going to put a little bit of this cranberry wine down. I'm using just cranberry wine this time. And down next to where we're going to have our little bit brighter highlight. And then we still need to go around this edge here. Okay. I think I will go a little bit more with the alizarin crimson down in here. I feel like I got just a touch bit too much burnt umber in there. And I want to take it back to the more pink side. Widen this out a little bit. It's a V. Now in a V area you, you want to push the paint down in there and then start rounding it with your brush and that will give it some shape and not just look make it look like a, a pointed little indent right there. Just a touch along this outer edge out here. And I think I will kind of bring that in just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to add some more pink over here, I think. Or this lizard and crimson. I want it to be. That's looking pretty good there. I think I'll get our um, primary magenta, some of that back out, and some Snow White. And this is just regular acrylic Snow White here. And we're going to start adding a little bit more detail on our petals here. Okay, I'm going to take some of that primary magenta and just Thin it down on my brush. I have a little bit of water in my brush. And I'm going to start just kind of pulling some streaks in here. Make sure we shape follow here our petal so it has that form. Okay, we'll put some in this one. This area right here needs to be much darker. And then on this side. Just a 
just give it a little bit of some darkness there. We'll go back and do we'll do some of the other ones here in a minute, but I just want to kind of work on these two. So now I'm going to take some Snow White and pull it from the opposite direction. And we're going to pull some white up in here. Start giving it some highlights and we might brighten our white in there. Okay, this edge out here, we want it to be light. Pull some in this direction. Make sure we are shape following our petal. Pull a little bit this way. I'm going to take a damp brush and clean up where I got over the edge there. I really want this to be bright here. Alright, we'll pull some at the tips. So we've got kind of a little point there, so I'm going to kind of push the paint in it cause, like it's a V and then pull out and we'll pull out on our edges here. Some over here. This is with white. I feel like that's already faded back in there, so I'm going to redo it. Okay, let's go over to this other one that we put our magenta on. And we're going to brighten this part up here. Just put some white in there and pull back. And we'll streak some up from the bottom. Lighten that up. And pull some from the tip here. And over here. some up from the bottom. Reload my brush here. I don't have very much water at all in my brush. I'm using mostly just straight paint. Just thinning it if I feel like it needs it. all three of those being the same height. That kind of bugs me. It makes me very happy. Okay, those two petals are looking pretty good. I'm going to brighten just a little bit up here. looking pretty good for those. I, I want to darken this right here because it's kind of like where the petal kind of goes down. It's down and maybe tucked around behind this petal. 
So I'm going to take my laser and crimson and a tiny little bit of burnt ember. Just a tiny bit darker. That defines that a little bit more. Go along the edge. I'm just up on the very chisel of the brush, just kind of outlining that edge there. Okay, that's got the two front petals completed. Now we're going to do the same steps to these petals back here. I'm going to go in and do this one first because it, um, it, it's it got more visual effect than some of the other ones. The other ones don't have as much detail in them, but um, I think I'm going to do this one next. Okay, before we go back here and do this one, on this one here, I want to add some more green in here. So we're going to get our media green gold out and some light avocado. And we're just going to take our brush. Now I'm just using a, a flat brush here, an 8 flat, that I'm pulling strokes with. You need a good, good brush, nothing that's frayed or worn out on the ends to do all these strokes in here to keep them nice. So we're going to pull a little bit of this up into our tulip base and it's going to go over here and some of it will be up on this petal here and I'm going to wipe off my brush I'm not going to worry about cleaning it and pick up a little bit of avocado and we'll put just a little bit of this in here especially right here where I want to darken it where it joins the stem here. We're going to come back and darken more, but uh, we just want to have a little tinting of this color kind of coming up. Into the flower right there. Okay, let's move on and work on this one back here. So we're going to uh, take our um, media paint. I'm trying to think. I was trying to think what I was using here. Our media primary magenta. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull some strokes in here first. Just a few here, and we can have a few. These will come more at an angle here because this leaf is kind of this part of the leaf is turned a little bit. Or the petal, not the leaf. And we'll have some here and some here. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush off because I want to add some uh, shading underneath this little turned place here. So I'm going to go into my Lizard and Crimson and a little bit of that burnt ember. And I kind of want my shadow to be out here a little ways. It's going to come like out here and across here. So we're going to put that. It goes all the way up to where it's turned here and comes across right there. A little bit of a shadow. We'll definitely have to darken that up. It's not quite dark enough. Um, let's take our primary magenta. And we will pull a few strokes this way. Okay, 
to settle that magenta down in there. Okay, now we can start adding a little bit of our white. Um, I'm going to come back and finish darkening this after we do the white. So, first thing I want to do on the white is kind of highlight this edge just a little bit. Just the very tip of it there. Definitely make it look a little more for, uh, bent over. Okay, we're going to put a little bit along the edge. Now, I just want you to be kind of, you know, choppy and irregular here. Don't be trying to make anything perfect. We are going to put some kind of down in here along this edge. It's okay if it fades out a little bit. We're going to put some coming down this way. So a few streaks. We're using soft pressure so that we don't leave tons of paint behind. We're just kind of tickling across and letting the paint kind of stick to the canvas where it wants to stick. Yeah, I think we'll go a little bit along this edge of that petal. I'm just loading, right now I'm just loading a little bit on the side of the brush, just on that edge right there, and I still do not have very much water in my brush. So let me put a little bit in here. Yeah, I want some kind of coming down in here. This one we don't need a whole lot going on with it. Just a little bit. But I do want to put some up at the edge here. Now my reference photo that I sort of am using, it's not an exact reference, but um, it doesn't really have too much going on with that petal, but I think I want to bring it a little bit more to the front and center. some of this down. I'm going to get a little bit more water in my brush so I can help it to let to smooth out. Okay, let's deepen our shading right here. And I think we're going to be about done with that petal because it didn't require a whole lot of um, work to get it to where it was at because our foundation that we laid in, we laid in pretty good. So we didn't have to worry about it. So again, let's, I really want it kind of dark underneath here. to create a little bit of a shadow. There we go. That looks much better. I like that. So that was just repeating that that mix of um, alizarin crimson and burnt umber. And I probably did two alizarin crimson to one burnt umber um, just so it wouldn't be too dark too fast. Okay. So now we're going to work on all of these these three remaining petals here. One, two, three that are left. We'll work on them all together and then see, and then we'll go down here to the stem, I think, and then we'll have this main flower completely done, I think. Okay, the outer petals on the back have far less detail than all these petals that we just did, are on the right. So, um, one thing that is um, 
doesn't quite look right is that this should be a separate petal here I think so we'll try to work that out so it is a separate petal so I'm gonna take my white and kind of brighten up this edge right here just right there at that tip okay and then this one here I want it to be bright at the tip of this Maybe pull a little bit back and then this one here we're just kind of gonna drag some white along the tip here of this one and we'll kind of go along the edge to kind of define that petal a little bit. Soften that down. And along the edge here. I just want to define that particular tip of a petal here. And this petal here actually, I think I want it to have a little bit of point right there and let me think about this I think I am going to take my black paint and edit the back of this a little bit I don't want it to be quite so puffed up right there Want it to be a little bit more flat. Okay, so then the rest of the um, of these flower petals over here, are, we're just going to take our primary magenta and just pretty much kind of block it in there because there's not a whole lot going on with these petals. They're pretty solid. Uh, I think we will streak a little bit of white up in there just to kind of change it up a bit and then down in here we can just put some of our primary magenta down in here make that uh, nice dark color but I really want them to match the other petals more so we're going to streak up some white in here and it's going to blend with that primary magenta we just put on there which is okay because we don't need this to be as bright as all of the other um, petals are. And I think I'll just pull a little bit of that down. And then in here, do the same. Streak a little bit of this coming down. Maybe. That'll come off my brush. And that's just a little bit too much, I think. Coming off of there, a little bit here. And I'm going to wash my brush out. I'm going to take that down just a tiny bit. Just have a few in there. But this one here, I do want to scooch more on it. This one right here. pretty good on that those because they're going to be quick and pretty easy. I'm going to reshade right here so that that petal is a little more defined. So that was with our lizard and crimson and a little bit of burnt ember. If you want a ratio mix I would say two or three lizard and crimson and one burnt ember because I just need that petal to be a little bit more. find and I think this one as well I think we'll just give them all a little bit more of a definition here a 
Okay, that's pretty good on that side. Now we'll go over here to this side and finish this one up. Okay, this one's going to be basically the same that we've done all of the others. So we want to take some of our primary magenta and kind of streak some of that down through here and down through here. Wash our brush out. We're going to go into some Snow White. And we are going to wipe my brush off just a little bit. I'm going to pull. These are actually two separate petals here. So on the inside I might try to find that a little bit. We're going to pull from the top down on this one. And we're going to give a little bit of a highlight here. Just kind of wiggle in a jiggle. We can pull a little bit of it towards the back. This edge on this one. So and maybe a little bit on this outer edge here. Let's get some shading going on here with our alizarin crimson and burnt ember. So I'm going to kind of define one of these petals, maybe. And, oops, stuck my paint on the wrong side of my brush. Okay, this is dark in here, so let's make it pretty dark. Ah, it's just a little piece of a petal back there. And we want to go up kind of underneath this and maybe pull it out some. A little bit more burnt umber in there. Let's go around this petal so we can get just a little bit more definition there. This petal, these two petals here are going to be pretty, kind of easy to do. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight in the centers here so we can define that this is an edge. So we're regular. Kind of smooth it out with the water edge of my brush. The paint hadn't completely dried or cured, so I was able to do that fairly easily. So now you can kind of just come in and any petal that you think needs a little extra done to it, you can go in and do that. feel like it's quite bright enough in a few places and just come in and add some brightness. 
I think it's looking pretty good for our main tulip here. Let's go down and work on our stem here. Okay, let's shade on this stem here. I am going to take our light avocado with a tiny little bit of lamp black. And when I say a tiny little bit, my avocado and you probably can't even see how teeny of a dot that is. And just kind of mix that in and make a very nice dark, not super dark green, but a darker green. So we kind of want to go up underneath here and kind of give that a little bit of... I'm just going to kind of pull on that with my finger because the canvas is going to grab the paint and uh, keep it there. But any excess I can just kind of remove with my finger. That kind of gives like this is over maybe the stem a little bit. And then we'll go along the outer edges with this color. We can touch up our black here when we're all done. And we'll go along this outer edge. Kind of give it some roundness. Okay. Then we want to add some highlight down the center here. And I'm going to use some media paint. Some Hansa Yellow Light. And we're also going to be using Snow White. I'm going to get some fresh Snow White out. Now when you put the media paint out on your palette, you literally need just a small amount. This is so pigmented, you know, you don't need much. Okay, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that media paint on my brush. And I'm going to kind of streak it down the center here and brighten up the stem a little bit. grab a little bit of that um, green gold. Kind of streak that down in here. We want to brighten the very center of that. I'm just going to wipe the excess paint off my brush and go into some Snow White. And we'll just put a little bit of that down our center. That is really a little bit more white than what I wanted. I'm going to darken on the outer edges here because they need to be just a little bit more defined. I'm going to mix a little bit more of that avocado and black. And define the edges just a scooch more. Just take it down a little bit. It is awful, awful dark for me. That was just our media green gold. I just tipped the tip of my brush into it and then just streaked it down just like we streaked up there. So I'll take a little bit of this that's on my brush and kind of blend it up into the flower. And that will kind of help take that little hardness of a line down and blend it all out nicely. Now, when we get done here, I'll just give you a demonstration, but um, down in here, let me zoom in so you can see, we have some raggedy edges from the paint. Well, we have a black background, so when we're done, we can just go in and clean all of that up nicely. There should be a little bit of a bigger gap here, which I'm sure that when we are done, we won't see because we'll have this paint over here so we can come back in and fix that as well. So, 
just wanted to show you that. I think our tulip is looking gorgeous. I love it. So we're going to go out here and finish these two. Now these two are basically the same flower. This this flower I put over here. So we're seeing it's like this part of the flower here is over here. This petal, you know, and some of these petals are over here. So it will be done the exact same way. So I'm going to do this one, but I'll go off camera and do this one so my, my uh, videotaping isn't hours long. So I'll do all of this one, but this one will be done the exact same way. You can see we have this flipped place here. We have this flipped place here. So these are the same petals back here. Okay. All right. So let's start on this one here. Zoom you back in just a little bit. Try and keep you on camera here. Because I'll kind of be on the edge of my canvas. So um, let me get some fresh media paint out here. First we need to shade, so let's get our Lizard and Crimson. So let's get some fresh Lizard and Crimson and some Burnt Umber because we need to shade this one like we did this one. So really everything about these flowers is going to be done, or these petals is going to be done exactly the same as we did this one. This one's the only one that's going to be a little bit different because it's kind of behind here. So let's shade with our mix and that's probably three alizarin crimson to one burnt umber you can add a little bit more burnt umber in there if you would like it to be a little bit darker and let me get my pattern see where I drew my flowers this is a this is an indent here but then this petal comes down here Okay, all this is going to be a little bit darker in here, especially where this comes, where it has that uh, fold in it there. Um, this is a petal here. This is a petal here, and we have this petal here. Just a touch too much water in my brush here. We've got this big one here. Okay, so that's kind of defining all of our petals here. I'm going to go ahead and go over here and do the same thing. So I'm going to go up underneath this one. Then this is a separate petal, and this one is a separate petal. That will just shade them all and come back and do our highlights we can definitely separate them more there's a petal here and one here and we've got one here one here we've got this big one that goes here and here so we can kind of see where our petals are there Okay, this outer petal here will be done just like we did this outer petal. Okay, so now I will just continue to work on this petal here, or this flower here. So we want to um, go next to this big tulip here. Kind of define a separation here with a little bit of a shadow. I'm not going to bring it out too far yet because I want to add my highlights and stuff. So I'll go in and add some high or bring the shadow out more after I've done that. And we're just kind of getting the placement of it for right now where we want it to go. Okay, that's not too difficult there getting those definitions of which petal is which. All right, let's get our hands, no, not hands, uh, primary magenta, the media paint. And load our brush up with that. And we're going to start streaking this color into our petals. This one kind of curves back this way towards the corner. Go ahead and 
throw some up in here in this one. Over here. You won't see a whole lot of anything going on over there. So I'm going to just go ahead and do this one while I have it. Both of these will be done the same way. I think that petal shaded there. Can't really tell at the moment. There's a petal here, and a petal here, and a petal here. I think there's a petal here as well. So. Alright. Okay. Well, let's go into some white. Brighten this up here. That's the part that goes down the center. We can take it all the way up there because we're going to be, uh, we can't see it where it comes out there, but we're going to be um, shading along where that meets so we don't have to worry about not taking it all the way up there. So let's pull some. This is our Snow White. up on both sides okay I want a little bit of the um, the primary magenta kind of down through here each side of this, I think. Okay, let's go back to our white. And we are going to start pulling down from the edge. So, this is where you can kind of create your edge to have a little bit of wiggle in it if you want. Because I didn't put much wiggle in these. going the wrong direction there and a little bit too much along the edge so let me wash my brush off I'm going to bring some of that primary magenta in here and drag some of this down in here maybe in a few spots in between white along the edge. So a little bit of a crisp edge here. Picked up a little bit of the magenta on my brush so I just went and wiped it off. strokes of the white up here and then I'm going to add a few strokes of that green gold because that's probably pretty close to the bottom you know, where it would meet the yeah. oh, sorry about that it's time for me to take my medicine so I'm going to put a little bit of this down here kind of where you know, it's probably coming up from the the base of the, from the stem. Okay. Alright, let's work on some of the other petals here. A lot of these petals are just going to have probably a little bit of white pulled on them. And probably nothing more than that. Because we can only see the tips of them. So 
So these two flowers should actually be pretty quick because mm. there's such a small amount of detail that we have to do on them. Basically we're highlighting the tips and then we're just making sure that all of our shading is where it needs to be. So like this is a turned place so we want it to be a little bright right there. Okay, And we'll go back and brighten our highlights because the first one will definitely fade back in there. But these flowers are not as prominent as that one up there, so we don't have to worry about the detail. I'm making it as bright as that one. Okay. I really think that's all we need there, so I'm going to deepen some shading here with our cranberry wine and burnt ember. And both cranberry wine and burnt ember are a little bit more on the sheer side as far as paints go. So using them together is going to make sure that we don't get too dark. Just go around all of your petals here. Make sure you're defining each one. Okay, so we're going to deepen our shading here. I'm going to get a bigger brush, I think. have a bigger one. There it is. This brush that I'm using to float with is a Kerr Flat, which is no longer available, so if you have them, use them. I have actually taken some flat brushes and just cut the edge at a rounded, almost like a filbert on this edge, and made some of my own, and they work just fine. Um, but you can use a flat brush or an angle brush, whatever brush that you like to use. That's the brush I want you to use. So let's shade here, separate a little bit. I want to bring that out just a little bit because we want to make sure that this flower really pops out at us. And I'm going to have to bring that out a little bit more. I'm going to mix up a little bit more here on my brush. And work that in. Move it out. Very gently. I don't want to remove. That's still pretty wet. So if I get too rough, I'm going to remove what I put on there already. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to let that dry, but I think right here I'm going to definitely darken with just a little bit more burnt umber. So I think that's going to finish that one. This one's done the exact same way, so I'm going to go off camera and do it so we don't have so much camera time repeating the same steps. And then we'll come back and finish this one. And then maybe, maybe, maybe I think we might add a big butterfly on here. I'm thinking. I'm thinking, so we'll see. Okay, let's finish this one here, and we're going to take a little bit of that magenta, primary magenta. We're just going to kind of, let me thin this down a little bit, and wash some of this in back here. Make it just a little bit more pink.
here. I think I want to add a little bit of orange. Or maybe some maybe some English red oxide. I don't know. I want this to be a little bit more of a brownish orange shadow back in here. use the English red oxide. We're going to use that in the butterfly. Give us a little bit of a shadow with that. And we'll pick up some of that green, that um, green gold. And put a little bit fresh out here. Just let that kind of mix with what's on our brush. And we'll just bring some of that up in here. And just a little bit of white. I'm going to blend that while it is wet. So it will not be stark white. And the stem itself, we're going to make a little bit darker. So, let's see, our green gold and some, okay, I'm going to pull a little bit of this. I mixed a little bit of black in with that green gold. I just want to pull a little bit up into our flower here. We want it, this one to look more behind. So I'm going to take a little bit of black and that green gold, maybe touch more black. And we'll kind of shade along this edge. Kind of make it look like it's going to fade back into the back. A little bit there. And we can, oops, we can do the same here. And then we have to separate these two. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to shade a little bit of the magenta, the primary magenta. I want to add another color in there, but I'm not really sure what color I want to add. I said tiny, I mean the tiniest drop that you can imagine, and that's probably going to be too much. We don't want this flower to look dark, we just want it look, to look pushed back. So we're also going to um, highlight on this one some more with some white. get some of our white and really brighten up this edge here and this edge here and we can pull those forward more and kind of push that flower more towards the back all right so let's take a little bit of our black and touch up down here separated and all things nice and tidy. Okay, up here on the top I got out a lines a little bit up here. So we can touch up our black background anywhere that we need to. Just a small amount of paint to touch up. Okay. 
Let's wide angle out just a little bit and we can see our tulips. Now you could leave it just like this. I think this is gorgeous. You could put, you know, a saying over here, some words, peace, peace tulips. I don't know, is there such thing? I don't know much about flowers. So um, th there's lots of things you can do. I really think I want to brighten up that edge a little bit now that I'm zoomed out and can see it. Just a scooch. And yeah, that's good. That's good. I don't want to make this any darker back in here because I'm afraid it will blend in with this flower here. I do feel like I need to shade next to it just a little bit more. smooth that out by using this dry mop brush and bringing that I'm not sure which brush I would use in here I don't think it was this one I'm hoping that that flower looks like it's behind that flower and that it's not a flower with two stems. So you send me some messages and some notes and let me know if that's how you see it. Because that's not the way that I want you to see it. Of course the butterfly, I want to put it on here, it's going to cover up a little bit of that. So maybe that will help bring the uh, illusion a little bit more in focus. All right, I'm going to get everything set up and get my butterfly transferred on so we can do it next. All right, I've got my butterfly pattern on here. So now we're going to paint it in. And I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, we're painting over all of our beautiful stuff. Well, we're not painting over all of it. And you can leave the butterfly off if you choose to. It, it is perfectly fine. But I think it's going to be a beautiful um, addition to our flower here. And I am base coating in with, you can use lamp black, but this is the carbon black, media carbon black. Because I'm going to be using uh, pretty, pretty much all media paints on the butterfly. So I'm going to go off camera and finish getting my base coats on here, base coat of black, and then we're going to come back and make this butterfly beautiful. Okay, got my black base coated on here, so let's paint our butterfly. So I have taken a primary cayenne, oh, I'm not really sure how to say that, seeing? and titanium white. Equal amounts and mix them together. And we're going to start painting in some detail on our butterfly. I'm going to have to go to a smaller brush here. So we'll start by going between our lines here. Blue in there. So 
Just mix a blue that you really like, that you think is pretty. So I just put a tiny touch more of the blue. Primary Cyan. I know I'm not saying that right. On there. So we're making a pretty fat little line here, but we're going to come in and break that apart. It's just easier if you just go ahead and make it fat, and then we can put the line in to separate it and create the sections. Then we're going to take this color and we're going to drag some of this from up here. So I'll start here in the middle. And we're going to drag some down. We're going to separate our little sections here. So if you kind of get them all becoming as one, don't worry about it. Let's curve it so it looks like the wing is curved. Okay. Go on this side. Just kind of dragging it down. I got that down a little bit far, but we will clean that up. I think I'll work on the lower wings first, and then we can um, come back and work on the upper wings and then the body. Okay. Okay, let's pick up a little bit of white. You can use either the uh, media white or just the regular white. And I think I will get just a tiny bit of that blue mix in there. Just a teeny tiny bit. Just kind of tint the white. And we are going to drag this up from this end. doesn't have to go very far. And don't worry if you've got the, um, you know, some irregular edges down here. We're going to come back with some black here in a minute. Do a little definition on here. Oops. A little bit too much blue. I want more white, just a tint of blue in there. I have to come back and do that. It's not quite bright enough for me. So we'll go back and do just straight white on the next round here. Get a little bit smaller brush. And I'm going to put some down here on these that I made down here. I'm just going to go across the whole thing. Just dry brush some on there. Remember, we're going to come back and divide these with some black here in a minute. white. I think I'll put some fresh white 
out. This white media paint is kind of thick. It's much thicker than I thought it was going to be. A little bit more on here. Okay, we're also going to take this white. Oh, got some blue in it. I'm going to clean my brush. Don't want blue to be in it. And we're going to go down under here. Add some white. straight white, media paint, or just the acrylic paint, either one will be just fine. Okay, I'm going to get my liner brush, I think. And I'm going to put a little bit more of the carbon black media paint out. Just this one. Use my liner brush and thin this down just a tiny bit. Okay, well, let's add some definition in here. Oh, something going on with my brush here. Let's see if I can fix that wild hair. that a little bit fatter. Push my brush down a little bit more instead of staying up on the tip. One wild hair on this brush. It's looking good. Then a little bit more, and we're going to go here. This can be a little bit thinner stroke here, just separating the white. Keep it thin. Your paint should be pretty much inky consistency, so it has an easy flow to it. Okay, let's put some. Ooh, that's a lot of paint. Let's separate these sections.
of the tip there. Okay, we're getting some good separations there. Go back to my a little bit bigger round. We're going to stay with our black here for a minute. And we're going to um, kind of create our separ separations a little bit more and drag some black down into our blue here. Just a bit more on these outer ones. Okay, then we can take some on the underneath side. Which one did I do? This one. And pull a little bit up into this. And make that more irregular. good. We just want that blue right through there. So we don't want the whole wing blue. I mean we put a lot in there but that's so we could come back and, and get it the way that we really want it to look. All right let's do the other wing. So we're going to come down from the top here. Start pulling some. Define our sections a little bit more. I like using the media paints here because they are so pigmented you don't have to worry about going back over and doing a second layer because they're going to take care of it, get the job done. Got a little more water in my paint here. from the other end here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Pretty darn good. I think I am going to pull a little bit right through here. I got a little bit too dark, I think. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that blue and just kind of drag a little bit. It's a little bit darker, so it's not quite as light as this. And just drag a little bit of this in through here. Maybe a little bit through here. to tint that blue down just a little bit. There, that looks really nice. Really nice for those lower wings. Okay, we're going to go up here to our upper wings and that blue that we mixed, we're going to use it Okay, we're not going to use much of this on our upper wings, but we want a, um, a line of it in here. I think I got several more. one extra one here and that's okay because nothing in nature is perfect so I'm not going to worry about it not being perfect. 
Okay, so we, we need that at the edge there. I'm going to take this brush and drag some of this on this lower wing here, or this lower section, and a little bit on this section, I think. Here, drag some of that up. This section over here, a little bit more narrow than the sections I did over there. to wipe my brush off but not take the paint out of it and get a little bit of white and mix it in with what's on my brush. Okay, and I'm going to give just a little tickle of a highlight here. And a little tickle of a highlight here. Take this lighter blue color and make a wider line above here. Add a little bit of blue to my mix here. Okay. Um, I'm going to wash that off, I think, and get some white. And we're going to go along the outside edges. This is just on the edge. Right over here. Repeat that because that did not get some fresh paint out. Did not. Yeah, the bright is what I would like it to be. We're using media paints because they are more pigmented okay that looks pretty good okay before we add any other color on there I'm going to get my liner brush out and my carbon black Thin some down to inky consistency. And I'm going to make some lines. Oh, that wild hair. I have to cut that hair off, I think. In the middle. And maybe a random one in there. Oh, I'm going to get a new brush here. Okay, got me a little bit better brush, I think. In the middle, um, I'm going to do it in just the blue section here. Okay, of course then we'll come back and do our sections here. We got um, more color we're going to be adding on here. I'm just going to create the sections down here. Give me some guidelines. Oh, 
all the way to the end of that white. It makes it look a little more natural. Here and do the side, so we're going to put a line to the blue. Preferably not in the white. That's some start to our wings, and I know this one looks more narrow over here, but this wing is a little bit up or something. Okay, um, we're going to get a new color out now, and I'm going to get this English Red Oxide out. It might be a little bit too dark, so I may need to add some white to it. Get my round brush back. I think I'll add some orange to it. This uh, vermilion. I'm going to keep it on the orange side, so. We're just going to mix an equal amount of those two. Okay, so. We are going to start. So we're going to add a, a wide one. We're going to come in with some black and separate everything. I'm going to add just a touch more of that vermilion in there. Give it a little bit more orange. And actually, I don't, I don't want it to go on the last, the last one here, so I'm going to remove that. Actually, the last two. Oops. We're going to do a different uh, color there. So we'll skip the first two. Go here. Okay. Get a little bit more of that brighter orange and put it on top. Take some white. I might tint it a little bit with that red. What is it? English red oxide. Not not very much. Just a tiny little tint to take the white down a little bit. And we're gonna put it here. Maybe Need a little water in my brush. I'm going to take some, some of that white and mostly white. I can have a little bit of that red iron oxide in there. And we're going to drag it back here. Just 
doing a little bit more paint on my brush here. Okay, just kind of streak it on there. Okay, we're going to take that red iron oxide, red, English red oxide, and we're going to streak it kind of like we did the blue down there in here. So we definitely want to start here and come back. I'm on this canvas so it is really pulling at my brush. Got a little bit dark over here. So we'll try and tone that back a little bit here in a minute. Or not, because I'm kind of liking it. Let's take our black and we're going to make sure we have a division here. And this, I'm going to get my big around. Carbon black. Okay, get some fresh black out. We are going to streak some in here. letting the brush drag and the canvas is pulling off the paint. Okay, now let's make our wing separation things. Ooh, that was a lot of paint there. I 
camera focus there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good on our upper wings. Let's do just a touch of a our body next. Make sure this is dry. I think I'll have it black out. I'm going to see about floating. Separate. kind of make sure we can see the separation of the wings there. And I'm going to do some around the body when we get the body done. Okay, I kind of put some shape here on my body. Now I've mixed burnt umber with a little bit of the English red oxide. I've got more burnt umber than oxide, so I just added a touch of that oxide in there so my burnt umber wouldn't fade back in so far. Just gonna kind of go make some sections there. This is kind of a almost comes to a point there. It's a little bit there, and then a little line of it here. Okay, let's come back with some black. Kind of a, a little, oops, too much, a little bit of a tip there, and we kind of want to separate our separations here, so we'll do that with some black, and we'll drag some black up into here, we don't want it all completely brown. Just be white. So we're going to have a couple of white dots here. One out here. One down here. Now I think we'll put a little bit on the antenna. Okay, now I want to shade around the uh, body. Just on the wings. We don't want to go on the flower. Just where it is on the wings. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit here for our separation. And a little bit here. Really want to create a line there. Okay, and then we're just going to take our um, our regular lamp black. I'm going to wash the brush out so I don't have any of the media black in it. And we're just going to touch up our background wherever we need to touch it up. I've got quite a few water spots on mine. Okay, 
if there's any places that you think you need to clean up. That's all that's left to do. Okay, let's wide angle out so we can see it in its magnificence. decide if I want to put a shadow on the flower itself, but I think I won't. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay, I'm going to call this one a very done project. I love it. I think it turned out great. You can do it with or without the butterfly. And uh, there we have it. Okay, thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys on the next one. Post pictures. I can't wait to see what you do with this one.